If you want to be successful at something, you find someone who does that thing successfully and you model them. It's how you accelerate the learning curve. If you're a voice actor trying to find success on Voice 123, my guests today have built the roadmap you're going to want to model. They've got a deep understanding of the platform and most importantly, the algorithm. Ah, the dreaded Voice 123 Ooh. algorithm. Welcome back to the show, Catherine Toll, Natasha Marchevska, the V123 pros. Hi. Yes. So we did an episode in September of 2021. We were talking about that. And so now we get to talk about all of the things that have changed on the platform. But there's one pressing question that I have to ask before we get there. Natasha, I know you were at VO Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Were you, did you sit in on the online casting panel? Oh, I did. I was in the second row. I, I would was love right on the edge to hear you. <laughs> your thoughts. If you have any, did, did you learn anything? Did you find anything insightful? Were you uh, shooting tiny laser darts out of your eyes at certain <laughs> statements? Uh <laughs> I was not shooting tiny, tiny laser darts out of my eyes. I have a very strong opinion, Mark, that I would love to share at the top of this show. Thank you for opening the door. I think there's a fundamental issue with communication, I believe, and debate me if I'm wrong, that the um, the voiceover community believes that we are owed something by these online casting platforms. And um, the online casting platforms, I believe, owe us nothing. They are technology companies doing their thing. They, so... In this essence, the VO community doesn't understand their business, the, the, the online casting business. In the, uh, ironically, <laughs> these tech companies don't understand voiceover. They've been around for 20 years and they don't understand our business. So, so true. here are these two types of business owners and we, they don't understand each other's essential, you know, the foundation of their businesses. And so it's super frustrating and tempers flared and <laughs> got really emotional, um, Mark. But I just sit, sit back and think there's this fundamental thing where it's too bad those platforms don't know voiceover. <laughs> they don't understand what we do. I, I definitely think that, that you've got a point there. I can say, so from my personal experience, and, and granted, I don't use the online casting sites anymore for various and assorted reasons, but my issue has always been that we are the customer, but we don't get treated like the customer. Mm -hmm. So but are we the customer? We're the mm -hmm. ones paying. Mm -hmm. So if somebody buys your course, if somebody comes and buys the V123 course, and then they come to you with an issue with the course or, you know, trouble getting access to the course. or they don't feel like it taught what they were supposed to, that it was supposed to teach them. And you say, sorry about your luck. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. Right. How many customers are you going to have? Because they're your paying customer, right? Right. Yeah. And, I and think I'm not saying that we're not the customer for Voice 123, but I don't think they treat us like the customer. No, no, no. Not Voice 123. I, I, well, I mean, whatever. That could be debated too. But I think that's across the board. I think that's always been the issue is we are the ones that are paying for access to all of these platforms. And some of them, it feels like they don't listen to us yeah. like I think they should. Because if yeah. I'm giving you $500 a year, $1,000 a year, $2,000 a year, I feel like I should have at least some, at least a seat at the table. Some value. Right? Yeah. I don't, agreed. I'm not saying that we dictate, but we should at least have a seat at the table. Well, and that's and how they would like understand our business. If yeah. they listened to our feedback, they would understand our business more fully. So how what do you think? Bad? I don't know if you were there was, I think maybe it was 2019 when was 2019 Rolf's first appearance at VO Atlanta? I didn't his, see it. I do know so that I did not see that. <laughs> his first, this, and I talked to Rolf after this uh -huh. last VO Atlanta. And I talked, we, we kind of joked about how the tables have turned, right? Because when Voice123, several years ago, when Rolf first took over, they were not a beloved member of the voiceover community. Like the platform was not a beloved mm -hmm. member of the voiceover community. And poor Rolf shows up. Yeah. thrown to the wolves right like no, it wasn't no, his no. fault he was it, mm. he hadn't been responsible for any of this stuff but he was the guy that was put at the helm to to captain the ship and he sat up there and he took it like a man you know the community unloaded but five years later 
he's sitting on the online casting panel here at, at VO Atlanta 2024 looking like the hero yeah. because he listened right now. Has voice one, two, three, given us everything that we want? No, but have they listened to the community and adapted along the way and allowed us to have some feedback? Yes. And, and so I think that was what made the difference, which goes to your point of, you know, listen and, and understand our business and, and understand what we're coming from. And certainly some sites seem to have done uh, a little bit better job of that than others. Or at least that's mm. what I think anyway. Mm. I wonder my opinion of they don't owe us anything. Maybe I feel like we don't pay enough for them to owe us, but you're right. I mean, our income, our membership dues <laughs> build their business. Well, if so. you take away the voice actors, they don't, what do they got? They don't have an income yeah. stream because we the the, the end user, it. the end user is not paying anything, right? So if yeah. you take away the voice actors, there's no income stream. So again, I don't think that we should run the show. I just certainly appreciate when we're given a seat at the table. I think Armin is a great example of that. Armin sits down and listens to what the community has to say. That's why the guy wins the, the what is it, the online casting site of the year award or whatever at, at the one voice they might as well just name it the Bedalgo award because he wins it every <laughs> year. but it's because of how much he's willing to sit down and listen to to what we have to say but okay so based on what you heard and i know you're the v123 pros but you do online casting and and you know i respect mm -hmm. what your what your thoughts are on this do you feel more optimistic or less optimistic about some of the things that were said and that could be for specifically to voices.com or you know across the board for what what you heard in that in that session i feel very optimistic for two reasons voices.com came out strong and tried to be as truthful and altruistic as he could be whether or not that's going to make changes we'll see yeah. you know you look and there's still really low paying jobs on voices.com they're they're everywhere but they didn't they say they're using gva rates so i'm yes. still optimistic he was he was earnest. I'm also optimistic because Karen Guilfrey, as far as I'm concerned, stole the show. Yeah. She says all the right things um, to support us, but also knowing her audience is also the online casting platforms that have her ear or no, she has their ear. Yeah. And she says she's just marvelous and so intelligent. And I'm grateful she's represented us uh, with Nava and beyond. Nava has really become the hero for the industry that we maybe didn't yeah. know we needed, but but yeah. that's really the role that they've like somebody buy Karen and Tim like <laughs> Iron Man suits or something like they are like <laughs> they are right? superheroes. They they yeah. literally that's what they feel like. So yeah. all right. So and then let's... we have something. Oh sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Then we have uh sort of a, a guide for which online casting platforms are like the good guys because they've signed on with Nava and what they're doing and mm. you know with with AI and everything I yep. thought it was really encouraging that voice one two three was one of the first to be like yes okay we're a part of this thing we yeah. want to do this right how do we make this okay and there was a lot of line of communication back and forth yep. between Nava and voice one two three and I think that's what we're looking for more than anything, right? Is is just let's have some open dialogue. Yes. Do voice actors need to do a better job of understanding the, the casting site's position? Yes. yes. <laughs> do voice actors need to do a better job of understanding the client position? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it works all the way around too, right? You've got three different entities and everybody wants to have it their way. And somewhere in the midst of all of that is the balance where all parties come out happy and satisfied and you know, like I said, it's at this point, some some seem to be doing a better job of that than others. But uh, it's certainly nice to see some of them willing to sit down and have yes. the conversation. So, all right, let's get into voice one, two, three. I know this is your area of of expertise, although we could certainly talk about some of this other stuff probably for an entire episode. But True. I reached out to my network and, and said, you know, I'm having the V123 pros on the show. What do you want to talk about? What should I ask them about? What are the questions that are most pressing for you? So there was one that came up, which I'm sure you're probably going to, you're going to relate to, but I'm consistently having conversations with voice actors who are seeing their rankings get into the basement. Mm -hmm. So the lower percentile rankings. So then as a result of that, they're seeing fewer auditions or mm -hmm. the, you know, a lot of people complain about auditions. Oh, they're all coming at three o'clock in the morning or whatever. And one of the things that has been suggested to them is that they upgrade to a higher tier membership. 
Mm-hmm. But is that actually how it works? Because <laughs> I didn't think that was how no. it works. But but some of them are saying that that's actually what the platform is trying to sell them as well. And I, I just never, I didn't think that you could just throw more money at it. Mm-mm. Yeah, I it's, recommend that. it's not ideal to do that as your first step um, okay. because it's a multi component algorithm. So yes, your membership tier does have something to do with when you get those auditions, um, maybe how in how full they're going to be as a result of that, but it's not going to change your percentage at all. Mm-mm. So even if you are at the, you know, bottom 20% of the 395 tier and you go up to like the 888 tier for example, like maybe you jump two tiers, you're going to get things sooner, but you're going to still get them at the very very end of that tier and sometimes those tiers overlap. Um, so you might not actually be getting them any sooner. Your percentile has so much more to do with when you get things than your actual numbers. And it makes sense from a business perspective that the platform is encouraging you to go up in a membership tier because then they get more money, right? Like this is a business again, this is a business. Um, but it's a lot better for you to take your time, go slowly with what you audition for. Maybe you have to do some nights and weekends just for a little while to get that percentile up. Maybe you're going to audition for some stuff that you don't super feel passionate about money wise, but you're right for in that role. Um, and then you can, you can crawl. It's a little bit of a crawling situation, but I did it. I know so many people that have gone from the bottom 10% to, you know, 30, 40, um, top, top 30, 40, sorry. So do likes factor in more so than budget? So I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying, you know, you mentioned maybe you've got to go after some stuff that's a little bit lower budget than what you would normally like. The concern then with some people is if I'm consistently auditioning at these lower budgets that I'm just going to end up seeing more of these lower budgets. But the, your point is you need to get nope. likes to get mm-hmm. moving up. So that's really at the end of the day, that's the priority, isn't it? It's just, it's 100%. the likes. 100%. It's the likes. Yeah, 100%. So how and many there's... likes does it take to move the needle? Because I think this is another common misconception. And I know there's not an exact science to it, but I think people will be surprised by the number or the approximate. Yeah. For a while I was sitting at like seven likes for one of the years that I wasn't really doing very well. Well, it wasn't that I wasn't doing well, but I wasn't actively participating very much. I think I had seven likes out of like 24 auditions or maybe 30 auditions or something like that. So the number that you need is not necessarily what you, what you're focusing on. It's the, it's the ratio ratio. of how many are liked versus how many you've done. So if you get all gung ho and you're doing 30 a day, but you're only getting, you know, maybe one or two of them liked because those are the ones that were best for you. Your ratio is now super shot. Compared to if you had just done those one or two and gotten those liked, or maybe three or four, you know, but you get one or two of those, that's that's fifty percent of them getting liked. That's that's a huge uh, boost to your percentile. Versus, I'm just going to go for everything. We're going to try it. We're going to, you know, spaghetti at the wall. See what happens. Yep. Let's get, you know, this numbers game. It's not a numbers game in that kind of way. Something that we're we haven't broadcast, and and so I'm learning from other people that this is a misconception. Voice one two three is not for beginners. Because if you can't get one thumb up out of five auditions you submit, you're in trouble. Okay. So you have to be a, a, a talented, preferably working professional, but at least you need to be able to book. If you're not bookable, and you then you don't get thumbs up, and then you tank. So we we sort of beg of beginners and to to shout this from the rooftops from for all the coaches. Because coaches say, oh, just go to voice one, two, three and practice. And you know how we, you know, I know how you feel about practicing. You don't practice on these platforms. No, don't practice on somebody else's job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Voices.com yeah. is more forgiving in that you don't get penalized for not getting a thumbs up or something. But voice one, two, three is not for practicing and it's not for beginners. You have to be bookable and then you'll start getting the thumbs up and then you can play the game. That makes you sense. Also- D- does that also speak to... I get the beginner side of things, but does that also speak to the level of competition that's on the platform as well? You're yes. just competing with a higher caliber yes. and that's why it might be a little bit harder to get some of those likes too. Cause you're, you know, you're competing with the best of the best type deal. Yes. And COVID. So now we have this influx of people who are 
not only can think they can do voiceover, but they can do voiceover because actors, as I call them, have yep. microphones. Yep. Actors have set themselves up. So we have this tsunami of talented people and tsunami of maybe not so talented. People. But anyway, a lot yep. more competition than we had pre-2020. And this is the crux of why people are not doing well, because they really have to be on top of their game with Voice123. They really need to do our course. There's just... I, it, I mean, after we've ha we've owned it for we we created it quite some time ago, and we can see you need to really understand what you're doing to do well. Do the course and then talk to us <laughs> about you know what your problems are with voice one two three. And you also need to be very aware of yourself and what you are best at and what you are bookable in, in terms of genre and voice style and age range. All those things are so important to know yourself. Because again, you really don't want to be auditioning for stuff that you aren't sure you're going to book. Uh, and voice, you know, voices.com and other platforms totally fine to kind of experiment and be, and be like, okay, well, I'm starting to get a little bit older, you know, okay, so they're asking, they're asking for a senior. Usually I do female adult, like I'll maybe try for that and see what they're looking for. Right. But on voice one, two, three, you really need to know, like, what is your lane? Stay in it. And then once you're at like top 20%, top 10%, maybe get a little bit more flexible you can audition for more things and play around more because it's a lot easier to uh, like go down one tier and then maybe crawl yeah. back up like, oh, OK, I, I experimented a little bit too much. But if you're down in the lower tiers, you really need to focus on what you're going to be booking or at least what you're going to get a like on. So that's got me thinking then you, you talked about the ratio. So one of the things that one of the one of the things that I've always thought on Voice One Two Three is, you know, okay, if thirty auditions come in, you got to be incredibly selective about the thirty auditions that day that you submit because you're you're trying to get likes. But it's not it's not specifically like you shouldn't be submitting more than four or five auditions a day. I mean, you can submit ten if you can get the right ratio of yes. auditions to likes. Then, yes. so it's important yeah. to understand that that's a subtle distinction, but it's important to understand that as well. Yes. If you can nail the audition, do it. If you can nail 10 of them because they're exact specs and you know it's you, do 10. If there's one, do one. I think, And that's definitely part of my success. I'm very slow and steady wins the race. And I know I said that in the last one, but I don't go gangbusters on it because you need to be hyper-specific. It's, it's important to understand that, though, because I think there are people that assume that I'll just submit for less but it's mm. not specifically the right. number of auditions that Correct. you submit. If you yeah. get 30 auditions in a day and you can get 20 likes on 30 auditions, then go ahead and submit yeah. 20 auditions and, or, you know, submit 30 auditions and get 20 likes or whatever. So it's really understanding that ratio. So then one of the things that Tom Deere and I talked about was analyzing the jobs that you're getting the likes for. Mm -hmm. So really part of this is understanding the algorithm, but part of it is also understanding you and, and what your sweet spot is, right? So it's, Absolutely. it's going through those auditions that you've got likes on and looking for the common themes. I consistently get a like for this type of direction or this type of read or this genre or whatever, because then you can get more strategic in what you're submitting for, which in theory, you know, provided theory, clients yes. do what they're supposed to do and hit the <laughs> button, right? Then you can you can get yourself back up there is that is that fair to say absolutely yeah and there's there's the third component there's the i mean so there's the algorithm as we've talked about there's knowing yourself which we've talked about there's another whole segment in our course about knowing the client mm -hmm. and looking at the client and who they are do they listen to most of their auditions do they so like is this their first project on the platform is this their hundredth platform and they probably know the whole deal right um you know, are they being specific about what they, what they're looking for? Are they putting in, you know, to be determined? They don't know, you know, how long is this piece going to be? If you don't know that, I'm not sure I want to be auditioning for this, uh, depending on what it is. So really analyzing the proposal, uh, and seeing what you want to audition for, what is worth your time. I did a coaching session with somebody earlier this week. And, you know, this was one of the pieces of pieces of advice that I had given her a couple of weeks ago in a session. So we did a session this week and I talked about, you know, what did you find as you went through and you looked for all of those commonalities and, and there were certain words that stuck out, you know, upbeat was one that she said consistently. I'm like, that's really valuable. That's really insightful. Yeah. So, and not just for voice one, two, three, but in how you market yourself in general. But the one thing that she discovered, which is something a lot of people might not be looking for was she noticed on jobs 
there was she was never getting any kind of response whatsoever on jobs where they didn't dis, they didn't know what they wanted as far as male or female and so she's like every time i submitted for one of those jobs i never got anywhere so i'm only going to submit going forward for auditions that specifically focus on female and i was like that's yeah. a really yeah, smart insight to pick up like you can part. find yep. Right. There's clues in, in, in the data. Yes. If you go looking for it. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I know this question is completely subjective, but I'm curious what you guys think about it. Good cue up. There, there's a lot of different approaches to online casting. Badalgo lets you just submit auditions, you know, voices.com lets you submit auditions, but then they've got their professional services. Voice one, two, three has the algorithm. You got to try to understand the algorithm. So I'm curious with all these different approaches that are out there, do you have a preference one way or, or another? Are you using different sites and you find this one works better for me or this one doesn't work better for me or I like this approach or now that I understand the algorithm, I get it. I'm just curious your personal experiences. Well, my personal favorite has always been voice one, two, three, and it continues to be. And I, you know, I don't, I can't say just like they have no loyalty to me. I don't exactly have loyalty to them. It's just how things run. I yep. have been testing out voices.com and also VO planet again, and simply not a fan for the basic reason that people move so fast on these platforms. You know, if I, 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 I don't want to move that fast. I don't want to push out auditions so quickly that yep. then it's not the best audition. Time is a factor in terms of I actually work. So I'm can't yep. I'm not on it all the time. And then when you get to them or you receive them, you want to give the best you can give. And so I do a whole listening process, make sure I'm submitting something great. That works for me on voice one, two, three. That more meticulous way of submitting things I'm proud of. Um, call me old fashioned, call me what you will, but Ah, uh, that rushing doesn't work for me. Yep. Um, Bidalgo, bless them. It's just such huge numbers that I have yet to figure out my sweet spot for Bidalgo. And otherwise, for the rest, I don't pay attention to other online casting. But I'm still still trying to crack v VO Planet and Voices.com. Um, and sure, 15, 17 years ago, I did fine on Voices.com. But it's been a long time. And boy, do they move fast. Not interested. So yep. Catherine, do you have an opinion? Well, for me, I mean, I know the most about voice one, two, three, so that's where I feel the most comfortable um, and have done well. So I will hopefully continue to do well. Uh, the other sites that I really like are the ones where you can put up your samples or demos and then have clients come to you. Mm -hmm. So things like Voquint, yeah. um, there's some other ones that I'm like testing out. But, uh, I like having spent a lot of time and money on my demos and my samples and I'm proud of them. And I think that they book really well for me. And so the more places I can put those out there where people will listen to them, uh, better it is for me because I'm not needing to audition. Sure. And because I have limited, um, sort of time and energy for auditions, I really mostly just stick to voice one, two, three. I'm totally on board with the whole rat race of it. That was right. honestly, that was one of the reasons why I walked away from online casting it was a mental health decision for me more than anything. Yeah. Cause I'm like, literally, you know, I'm standing at the grocery store watching these auditions coming in and knowing that by the time I get home from buying my milk, I've missed out on 20 auditions and it makes me never want to leave the house again. I'm like, this is not, this is not healthy. This is not right. a healthy way to live or operate your business. And so I totally get that side of things. Do you think as voice one, two, three continues to tweak the algorithm, thinking back to smart cast, for example, which was in the very, very beginning. Has it gotten better? Do you think it's gotten better? No, oh, I don't. I think it's oranges and apples. I don't <laughs> think it's gotten better. I think I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop with any online company, right? So it is what it is today. And we could wake up tomorrow and be something different. I'm all about adapting to technology. You have to. Yep. Um, so I don't put any tr trust in that it's going to be <laughs> like this tomorrow. Um but it stayed steady. So there have been a lot of changes, which we haven't talked about yet, Mark, in terms of SEO and whatnot. Um, and so they, what are you calling it, Catherine? Version three point something, or are you calling it? This version is version three. three. So right? Or is, no, sorry, I was calling it version four. My bad. 
What, version what four. So they came out a good six months ago now with a new way of entering keywords. So for okay. those of us, Catherine and I, who have spent a lot of time on keywording, all our samples and, and everyone else's, they changed the game on us. Uh, so they're using some keyword f as keywords as filters. And so um, if you've done nothing in years for your voice one, two, three platform, um, dashboard, you're in luck. Yes, you're in luck, Mark. <laughs> um, because it's, you have not wasted any time. But moving forward, it does take some time. You want to make sure, as everyone says, to fill out your samples and your profile, your the whole dashboard fully to the fullest extent so you can be found. Because Voice123 is not just about auditioning. It's about being found. And if you're not using keywords, you are not being found and you're leaving money on the table. I think that's one of the things people don't think about is this is it's a casting site, but it's also a search engine. Mm -hmm. It's a huge search engine. So going back to the earlier example that I was talking about, you know, the, the student that figured out, you know, upbeat, that was one of the words that came up consistently. Is this one of those things where she would make sure that the word upbeat was attached to some of her samples? Because if that was, a you know, a, a direction that a client was specifically searching for, she comes up like, is that what you're talking about as yes. far as labeling? Or Yeah. Yes. Okay. Upbeat is one of the voice styles that okay. they have selected now. There's just about 20 voice styles that are like the most common words that we use. So conversational, upbeat, friendly, um, like explainer is one of them for some reason. Uh, those are now filters. So okay. a client can go in to search and they can select, okay, I want to only listen to the upbeat samples. And then maybe they want to um, further filter down from there. Like I want uh, upbeat, female, young adult, commercial, and then all of that's going to get displayed and then okay. you can search for words. So if you're uh, not using those there. filters, you're not coming up. Not. So the people that yeah. have been on top of that game are coming up. But how effective do you think, so conversational, for example, literally the most overused <laughs> word in voiceover, possibly only next to non-announcer, but everybody's asking for conversational. So my guess is that every voice actor is going in and labeling every stinking thing that they do as conversational, whether it is or it isn't, because again, you know, hello, subjective, ask a hundred people what conversational means, get a hundred different mm -hmm. definitions of it. So how effective do you think some of that stuff is then if everybody's using the same, you know, would you say 20 filters or, or whatever, does it actually get to a point where it filters anybody down? Well, yes, because if you use the English USA and Canada and then female adult, and then maybe you use accent of a U.S. general American or Midwestern, and then you use the purpose of recording filter, which is advertisement, it will bring you down to a collective, you know, it's the samples that need to be labeled appropriately. So if you're going to label everything conversational, you're really gumming up the works. Uh, you need to label the samples specifically. So like Voquent is a wonderful example. There might be dozens or hundreds of people with the same, they have conversational, but there's additional words. There's so many different filters. Yeah, combinations. And you can only select two voice styles for each sample. So if you're putting conversational in every single one of them, you're really uh, lowering your chance of being found for any of those other 20 words. Missing out on all the rest. And you don't okay. necessarily know what people are going to look for. Okay. Um, and you really only want to use that best word, like upbeat, on your most upbeat sample within a genre. Within because a genre. most likely people are going to filter down language, voice style, purpose of recording, and age and gender. Like those are the ones you really want to focus on. So, and these... so if you have... Yeah. So uh, these changes that you're talking about now, when this is version four, you said, when did that mm -hmm. start? End of last for, year. Yeah. For the talent, we started being able to work on it, I think March of last year, and then it fully got released to clients October of last year. So if somebody hasn't looked at their profile or tweaked their profile since last fall, really it's time to go and reevaluate yeah. everything and make sure that everything conforms to the new system. It makes me think about Google, right? Just when somebody figures out how yeah. to game Google search, Google goes in and completely changes all of the rules because they don't want yep. people to really game it. They want to, mm -hmm. you know, so they change the rules to try to level the platform or whatever. It feels like there's maybe an element of that going on here. Sometimes these improvements, maybe they're about uh, improvements, but maybe they're about <laughs> actually improving. Maybe they're about you know, leveling out the playing field again. 
Well, in fairness to Voice One Two Three, they were trying. They're trying to make it easier for the voice seeker, um, mm-hmm. adding these filters. Uh, now and that makes sense. It's it, what is it? April. It's March, and so t- you know w- we don't know how effective these are. We don't know if the clients are using them. So we're still I, presumably in a testing phase for the next year plus to see you know is this effective. So I'm assuming this is more tied to direct bookings or sorry, uh, direct invites. Is that where you would really notice if this was working? All of a sudden mm-hmm. yeah. you start to see some more direct invitations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more direct Great bookings, point. more messages going into your inbox. That's how you would know people are finding you. Okay. Great point. So there's, it sounds like there's a, a preset number of filters that you can use. You mentioned, you know, you can choose conversational upbeat, whatever. There's like 20. Is there anywhere in the profile now where you can do some more type some of your own key words or key phrases? Absolutely. So they have um, the opportunity to put two voice styles. Then you have the opportunity to add three keywords. uh, um, Search keywords. Search keywords, sorry, uh, that are not a voice style. So you can't use those 23 or however many there are voice styles. You have to use something different. You can also use keywords in your sample title. And they also said they were going to take away additional sample details and they've changed their mind. So we can use additional sample details as well. So you can pimp out your each sample like crazy. And we recommend you do um, using all relevant words to be found. So that's where when somebody's coming in and they're, you know, clients coming in and they're searching and they use, you know, the Sam Elliott reference or whatever you put Sam Elliott in one of your samples where you've got that Sam Elliott style thing. Mm-hmm. And then that's where it, it benefits you in search, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just looked, there's 23 uh, voice styles and 26 purposes of recording now. Cause they also added a ton more purposes of recording to get much more granular about the genres that we work in. So I feel like part of this is paying attention to the trends. I'm thinking specifically about, Super Bowl. What was that one commercial? I, I can't even remember it now because we don't get the good commercials in Canada. What, what's you guys know what I'm talking about? That one commercial that everybody was talking about that was that disconnected uh conversational reader, whatever they were calling. What was the brand? I can't even remember what the name of You're the brand asking was. the two people. <laughs> Neither watch. one of you what were watching the Super Bowl. I have been going to iSpot TV and watching all the Super Bowl commercials, but I can't I can't remember because there were actually so many. I'm totally brain farting on it. But anyway, my point <laughs> is that was like the commercial that everybody was talking about. And one mm-hmm. thing we've seen in the past is, you know, Apple comes out with a new mm-hmm. commercial and everybody mm-hmm. loves it. And then they'll put reference in the casting yeah. directions of, right. you know, the Apple spot. Yeah. So if you've got a sample that is reflective of whatever that Super Bowl commercial, it's going to drive me nuts that I can't remember the name of it now. But if you've got a, a sample that would be relevant to that. Yes. Update your keyword to reflect that because that's yes. potentially yeah. something that everybody's going to be searching for. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. And and on the other hand, don't use words that they're not going to search for. What a waste of real estate. Really put and some time. thought in. And time. Yeah, uh, I, w- I can't tell you how many times we find words that, you know, people aren't going to search for those. So just use your intuition and intelligence uh, when sifting through things. It's hard when it's subjective. You know, it's when you're where you're really close to it and you're using words and you think, well, this works, this works, this is really boring and tedious. I'm just going to throw this in. Go through it and clean up your site so it's super specific and uh, to that sample. And we have a whole uh, keywording module in the course that really talks about how to come up with those keywords. Mm -hmm. What are things that people are actually going to search for and not, you know, how to brainstorm things, what to do if you can't brainstorm. Uh, Because it's it's hard. It's really hard. But doing it, you know, with another VO friend is one way to uh, to really help get the creative juices flowing. What words do you think (laughs) of when you listen to this sample of my voice and then see what it (laughs) not against it? Yeah. I mean, that's always the works. hardest part, right? I think back to the first time that I read Celia Siegel's book, the, the voiceover achiever book, and you know, some of the brainstorming exercises that she has to go through and it kind of like come up with a hundred words for this. And I'm like, I got three and that's it. I'm done. I got nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was so, such a hard exercise. So labeling, I guess that's one of the things where it'd be really good maybe to work, you know, find a group of four or five other voiceover colleagues and get each other to listen to each other's demos and, mm-hmm. you know, see what each other has to say about it. But Okay, here was another question that yeah. came in from uh, from some several people wanted to know the answer to this. 
with regards to samples, is there a recommended number and is there an average number? Can you have too many or is there a limit to how many you can have? I would say for, um, for samples, since you can have two purposes of recording on each sample and you can have two voice styles on each sample, if you do a matrix and you like multiply those together and you get a little like spreadsheet or some sort of grid and think, okay, what is my best, you know, upbeat of advertisement? What's my best upbeat of, um, you know, explainer? What's my best upbeat that's political? And kind of think of it that way, that would be your bare minimum. You don't really need multiples of each of these things. It gives you an opportunity to put in even more keywords, um, which can be nice. But I think at a bare minimum, have maybe a commercial demo and a narration demo or an e-learning demo. Uh, that'll really get you a lot of what's being uh, cast on. I always say less is more. You don't need a ton. But Catherine brings up a perfect point, And that is you want to cover all your bases with your voice styles and your purposes of recording. Thankfully, you, I can cross off a few purposes of recording. I won't do adult content, for example. Um, there's TTS in there. I don't. I won't do certain things. Um, so that narrows the field a little bit. But yeah, you want to cover all the bases. So start typing. Start <laughs> typing. <going>. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's a lot of different genres, right? But yeah. realistically, yeah. how many of them can you actually do? That's and right. I mean, that goes back to the what we were talking about earlier with being really strategic in what you're auditioning for to to get those to get That's the right. likes, right? The ratio of likes that you that you need. Yep. So right. you mentioned earlier the the solution to the problem of the basement is you know the lower percentile rankings is not to throw more money at it, but there are a lot of membership tiers on uh -huh. on Voice One Two Three, like they. They cover the spectrum from free to, you know, multiple thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Where, where do we start? Is it, is it the 395? You know, some people are singing the praises of the 888. Uh, where is the reasonable place to start? Well, we always we do have a, go, go ahead, ahead Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a video that is free on the website, all about memberships and kind of what we recommend. There's a PDF for kind of where we recommend you start as well. So the most up-to-date information will always be there. Okay. But if you think about casting on this site as a big funnel, uh, all the jobs go in the top of the funnel, the top memberships and the top percentiles get them first, top memberships, lower percentiles, you know, get them next. And it all trickles down. Sure. But it's going to depend on what language do you speak? What is your demographic? What age are you? Because that's really going to depend on how many auditions you're going to get. And if you speak a language that's not super common on the platform, you can be at a really, really low tier because those jobs are going to filter all the way down that filter into right. the bottom. Yeah. Um, that's and if you do an amazing child voice, for example, like there's mm -hmm. not that many actual children on the platform. So those jobs will go all the way down to the end of the funnel. I always like to say to niche voices, it's good news for you. If you have an accent that right. isn't as bookable as middle of the road, middle-aged white person um, like me, if you have something super specific, quite senior or um, super quirky or an accent, the good news is you don't have to spend as much money. You can be at the the regular 395 or even the bronze level, I think it's one step lower. As long as all your stuff is filled out, you will be found for what you do. Is there data somewhere where somebody could go who maybe speaks a different language or something like that and they could see like, oh, there's approximately this many jobs or approximately yeah. this this number of talent that are in that demographic or to help them make some yeah, of those if decisions? You go, I think that's in the video. If you go to the membership section of voice one, two, three, and you put in your specifics, like this is the language I speak. This is my age range. This is my gender. Uh, you get these numbers okay. of how many people you're competing with on search, an estimate of how many auditions they expect you to get in the year. Um, I think there's one other field, but you get some relative numbers of, of who you're competing with or who else is on the platform that's in that same demographic. Well, and then you would also use the filters if, if you can with a non-paid membership, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can. Put the filters in. Look up all the people that speak your language and are your demographics, and you will see them. You will see who they are and who your competition would be. 
Man, that is yeah, such... you can use search just like you're a client. That is such good insight because my guess is there's at least a percentage of really niche voices or niche voice actors who are probably spending too much money on, yeah. on the yeah. platform because they don't know that this is how it works or this is how you can filter and find out. And, you know, you could downgrade your membership yeah. and still get access to the same kind of opportunity or whatever. So that's... Man, that's really good, really insightful information. Now, what about membership tiers? I know with yeah, it's platinum, right? Is the is the top? It's mm -hmm. limited. There's only Very. a certain number that they allow. Mm -hmm. Are there any kind of limits on any of the other tiers? Do you know, or is it just kind of open no. season on whatever? Whoever will pay gets we'll, we'll in. Get in. The platinum is 84 talent, and I've asked them, you know, why 84? Why not 100 or why not 50? It's a and very said, random specific number. It? They say that it's their sweet spot, and they okay. want to give enough value to the people who pay for the platinum membership um, as well. And there's very little wiggle room on there. They're trying to make sure that it's as diverse as possible, so they continue to do that if people drop off. And um, again, if you're a middle-aged white person, there's a chance, very slim chance that you'll get to play the game um, at this phase. And we, we are solidly in there. Like I'm a platinum talent. It's worth it to me. I'm staying on there. People uh, rarely move, but they do move. And there's an acceptance situation where you have to submit to be accepted to be on the waiting list. So just putting that out there. So <laughs> just know that, easy. you know, if, if we've already established that one of the things on one, two, three is you're competing with the best of the best. So now we're talking about at platinum, you're competing with the, the one percent of the one percent. Is that kind mm -hmm. of <laughs> kind of yeah. we don't all have time to audition all the time. So you can guarantee that a lot of the platinum are actually working and they're not going to audition for everything. So that's really good news for the premium talent. Um, and also know that a top the best of the best are also changing their names. So you don't know who they are because uh, this is mostly a non-union platform and they don't want to be known as to who they are. So you have to be ready to compete with the best of the best. However, we are busy and we're not auditioning for every single thing. Right. So it's really those platinum, uh, those premium people that, that pay more that are probably more active. Yeah. I know a couple of people that are in the platinum tier that stay in the platinum tier just because they know that they get found first on search. So they get a lot of messages and direct bookings. Uh, but a lot of auditions are just going to pass them by. And then again, trickle down that funnel. Do you but, think that's the advantage to the platinum tier is the preference in search more than anything? Mm -hmm. If you've yes, got your profile so. filled out correctly. Yes. I get direct <laughs> messages all the time for jobs and direct bookings without having to audition. Um, but it's just like anything else, Mark. What I said before is the other shoe uh, dropping. You know, I don't know if they're going to change the platinum tomorrow and open right. it up to 200 or yep. get rid of it entirely. So we just keep, uh, you know, chipping away at what we have. Do what we, do what you can with what you have. Always have more than one income stream. Yes. Just never That's be relying thing, on any right? one thing. <laughs> Diversify and where your auditions are coming from. Uh -huh. So we, we got to go to the elephant in the room, which is the AI oh. side of all of this. Oh. Boo. Yeah, I freaking hate <laughs> talking about it, but people want to know. We don't have to, Mark. <laughs> so, Voice One Two Three has it. It feels anyway like they've been very forward looking in this AI yeah. thing, and and where uh -huh. that's going to go, or what that is potentially going to look like. So, mm -hmm. as you know, two people who are the V One Two Three pros who are very deeply ingrained in all of what is happening there, talk to us a little bit about what some of these AI developments look like. Uh -huh. What do we need to be watching out for? Well, well, Rolf is currently pushing um, this plan to have AI voices made um, if you want it so that you can do auditions in the night or when you're traveling and use that AI technology to help you and to support you actually in your career. That's so um, smart. It's yeah, so smart. it's smart. I and but uh, I'm still noivous it's, about it's, it's a little scary, but at the <laughs> same time, it's definitely I mean, it's it is smart thinking until we figure out why it wasn't, but <laughs> true. But I have a ton of faith in Rolf because yep. he wants to do it on the up and up. He doesn't want it to be a concern. He wants it to be super legit and where they mark the AI, where you can track where your AI uh, samples and voice has gone. So I, I trust him implicitly. I'm just not ready to make the leap. 
Um, but it's it's underway. It feels like the downside I, to that could be somebody posting an audition script that is the job, right? Hmm. And then your your AI hmm. records it in the night while you're sleeping hmm. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but like every commercial feels like that. That's true. But <laughs> speechless. No, so, some of them, but I, I mean, and again, I'm not on the site, so I don't know, but lots of times you see, you know, we've got a 30 second commercial and they post, you know, 15 seconds of the script or whatever. Right. So and maybe that's changed, but very seldom are in the past. Anyway, it felt like people were posting full scripts or expecting you to audition right. for the full script. My concern right. would be somebody posting the full script, your AI recording the full script, and then having that audition sample that they could potentially use then right I, and there, this is all stuff that we've got to figure out right this is we're in the we are in the wild west and trying yeah. to determine how all of this is going to work right now what about I, the text-to-speech side of things in in those jobs what what are you seeing there any developments there protections there what's going oh. on on that front well as far as i can tell and Catherine, please correct me if i'm wrong there is no protections uh I don't see TTS jobs because I have, um, well, Catherine can explain it better, but I reject anything that says TTS and I can do that okay. literally by typing in, I do not want to see anything that says TTS. So now okay. I see nothing. Okay. But um, Catherine, can you be more articulate? About yeah. <laughs> so when you get auditions that you don't ever feel like you're going to be right for, like I just don't ever want to audition for audiobooks, for example, mm -hmm. you can um, reject a job and one of the other uh, options in that list of why are you rejecting it? Um, you can put in a keyword for like, I don't ever want this. Okay. Um, I wouldn't recommend you go willy nilly with that. Cause sometimes they might say, here's a book reference for, for our video. Sure. And like, this is a sample of it or something. Um, or but book for TTS, job. right. Yeah. Like I would do a book trailer, but not an audiobook. So don't use the word book, but audiobook is one word you okay. can use. Um, when all, when voice one, two, three got flooded with a ton of TTS and AI projects, um, Karin and Nava did a great job of collecting all of this data of like how many people were getting and what their experience was and then sent that over to Rolf. And so now Voice123 has a, an actual process that a company has to basically get approved to put a job on the platform okay. um, by, by following a certain um, protocol, certain guidelines. Yeah. Certain yeah. protocol. Um, so if you do see a project now that comes up on the platform, it's because that company is vetted. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that I mean, that right there is a really great example of the platform sitting down, listening mm -hmm. to the talent side of things, finding a balance between what the talent needs, what the client is looking for. That's that's a great example of of something like that. So I, it you know makes me happy to hear that. So what other big changes have happened or are in the works or are rumored? to be happening uh, that I don't know about because I'm not on it. So I can't ask the question. Like, t tell us, tell us what we don't know. Well, not much. So um, thank they you. Made tell my big... wife, please. <laughs> <laughs> they made this big change with the keywording and the samples and put a big push onto that. And now they're just letting it sort of cook. Nothing else is happening. Um, there have been some staff uh, turnover. So it's been quiet. So the last yeah. thing I've heard is, uh, did receive the email from Rolf about AI being a possibility. And actually voice one, two, three is being, is much better about sharing information uh, than ever before. So ever since we came out with our course, they are much better at putting help articles and blog posts, um, into their site. So they give you an idea of what's going on. Um, if you're, I can't remember, Catherine, if you're a member or not, you can go into the booth and you can look at projects that are coming down the line, coming down the pipe. Um, I think so. Yeah. They have basically a product roadmap. Okay. Or a product roadmap. They yeah. Show. Um, so, and having just talked to Rolf at uh, VO Atlanta and, and asking me if I'd be interested in, in having my voice, um, recorded so that we could do, you know, have that AI availability because other platforms don't have that, you know, whatever other platforms don't have would be a benefit to them. So that's sure. all we really know. You know, they're not a huge team and unlike voices.com, they don't have millions and millions injected into them. So, um, 
that's that's all we got right now but i do recommend going to the booth um you can find it on our website v123pros.com uh, has a resources section okay. um but also if you look through their help section on voice voice one two three they've done a marvelous job of creating more content okay. which is a long time coming so yeah. um i recommend reading everything you can over there so I want to clarify for people, because I think it's an important distinction. You guys are the V123 pros, but you are independent of Voice123. You are not 100%. affiliated with They didn't know we were doing this inside when we started. Or whatever. But <laughs> I think it's important for people to know so that they realize that, you know, this is not information that's being, you know, selectively chosen or fed mm -hmm. from Voice123 or whatever. Mm -hmm. You guys are completely independent of the site and creating resources to help voice actors to succeed on the site. Mm -hmm. So... Tell us a little bit more about the course. I, I know you keep it updated. You pretty mm -hmm. much got no choice when you've got a platform yeah. that's changing consistently. So constantly give, changing. Give us the rundown. Keeping us on our toes. Um, I mean, we sometimes find out about new features from users of our course, which I think is funny. Like you would, you would think that maybe they would want to tell us yeah. about things coming up so yeah. that we can keep everybody abreast, but no, sometimes they don't. And we uh, just did major, major updates in January of 2024 because we wanted to roll out um, updates from all of the V4 changes. So there's a ton of new stuff about search and playlists and samples. We added some things about keywords since there's now a differentiation between what you should put in your voice styles versus search keywords versus the titles. Um, trying to think of some other changes. Oh, we also released a brand new module. Woo! Uh, we did a webinar about what the client sees. So if you were a client on the client side of the platform, what does it look like when you have people audition for you? The what, is behind the, the curtain. what is the like <laughs> um, feature look like? Mm -hmm. All of those sorts of things. We go through a project. Does it have a see. giant button with big flashing red arrows that point that say, hit no. this button? <laughs> No. Oh, <laughs> no, we'll work doesn't. on that. <laughs> yeah. So we'll submit a feature request. So yeah, we, when you pay for our course, you do get lifetime updates, and that's pretty important because we yeah. don't want stuff to be stale. I listened through our webinar that we did for you last time, Mark, and I can say that everything on there is still solid, still rings true. So I'm relieved to know that because we do not like to have things that are not um, up to date. Sure. Um, so that's been a wonderful opportunity for people to learn. However, we do th think that people need help. Um, some people purchase the course and they don't do it. You don't know anything about that, do you, Mark? I'm um, amazed <laughs> at how many people do stuff like that. Um, so we have other features. So we have not talked about our keywording lab. So we, we talked about how difficult it is to, to keyword your own stuff. We have a random keywording labs when a, we have people that are really interested in getting together in a group of six and then Catherine and I are added and for a couple of hours we will brainstorm keywords awesome. for you we have a ton of free resources but Catherine's come out with this really really smart thing as she does uh, called the accountability buddy program so if you okay. purchase the course with a partner you it's a discounted thing because we want people to do it actually we do just it want you to do it and we're yep. we're not charging a lot it's you know, it's, it will save you some heartache and headache and money if you will actually do this. Um, and, and she's created also something wonderful on the same page under the accountability program. Um, an email campaign that's simply tips and encouragement. So it says, did you do this? This is how you do it. Go on now, go, go do it. So little reminders yeah, that, you know, even if you just do a little bit every week or every other week, like overall, you're still going to be in such a better place than if you feel really overwhelmed because there's 15 modules in the course and you just feel like, I don't have time for this. I'm going to do it later. And then nev later never happens. Right. I, for the longest time had a folder of recorded webinars on my computer that, you know, I signed up for because they were great content and I mm. didn't have time and I figured I would do it later. And it wasn't until my accountability group sat down and went through all of my recorded webinars and recorded webinars that they had over the course of a couple months and doing it together, made sure it happened, mm -hmm. right? We put it on our calendar yep. so that it actually happened. We all took notes and then we kept each other accountable to, you know, go into your LinkedIn and do those things that Tracy says, yep. okay, taking Mark's course and breaking that down. And, you know, did you actually do the thing from last week? And so we wanted to try and recreate that 
So for $150 per person, so it's like sort of buy one, get one half off, uh, buddy up with someone or four people, whatever you want to do and actually work through the course Mm. so that you can be found, you can be found on search and get bookable jobs. $150 is a very low paying job on the platform. On average, it's $300. So my whole thing with, and this is what I tell people all the time that are talking about using the set. I'm like, look, you're going to spend, you're going to spend 395. Generally speaking, you're going to spend 395 at least to sign up for voice one, two, three. Some people pay more, some people pay less, but I think 395 is probably the most common entry point. I'm like, if you're going to drop 400 on it, then for the little bit extra to make sure that you're actually using it properly, because the last thing you want to do is drop 400, spend a month auditioning all wrong end up in the lowest percentiles and then you spend the next 11 months trying to dig your way out pay for speed this is it's a concept tony robbins talks about you pay for speed right rather than going in there and doing everything wrong find somebody else who's already done it who can teach you how to do it rather than trying to figure it out on yourself for six months or eight months sit down watch this course couple hours boom you paid for speed now you know exactly what to do exactly how to use the site it, it makes so much more sense. So we yeah. will absolutely include a link to that in the show notes. It's just v123pros.com, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I know you've got some free resources that people can go and, and sign up for. I actually yeah. downloaded a couple of them. You probably see me on your list now because I downloaded a couple <laughs> prior to the interview just to see what was going on and any changes while I was doing some research. But uh, so many great, valuable resources to help us to to figure out this platform. But uh, I'm certainly grateful for everything that you guys are doing. And and I re- totally respect the fact that you stay on top of it. You don't just, mm-hmm. you didn't just create a course and put it out there and let it sit, you know, Mm-mm. constantly keeping it updated to reflect everything that's going on on the site. So that makes it an even more valuable resource for anybody who's using the platform. So thank you for that. Yeah. Well, thank we you. Are, we are really passionate about helping other people make money. We are. Like, it is, it is it's tricky. It is difficult. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes me happy to know that other people are, are out there making more money as a result when everybody's using the site properly it makes the site better on the whole as well right it makes a better experience for the for the buyer it makes a better experience for voice one two three it makes a better experience for for those of us that are submitting as well so that's i think that's really important yes yeah um and integrity is what you know we like to do things with integrity and that's where i want to thank you mark for Uh, your incredible integrity with all that you share and how you support our community. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Voice one, two, three, or sorry. V one, two, three pros.com is the website. And look at, I'm getting it wrong. V one, two, three (laughs) pros.com is the website. Again, we'll put it in the show notes, go check it out, download some of the free resources. And if you're looking to, to really level up quickly on, on the platform, then definitely of course we're checking out. Catherine, Natasha, thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us. Thank Thank you. you.